Hey everyone, my name is Gustavo Coelho. I'm here to present a work made by me, Vitor Aranha, Peterson Nogueira, and Murilo Borato. And our work's name is a comparative analysis between different interpolation techniques applied in FWI using DSL DeVito. So I'm going to start talking uh, a little bit about the DeVito, uh, what is the framework DeVito, how it works, and how interpolation methods uh, fits inside the structure of this framework. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the equations, the mathematical equations that we use as base to implement the two new interpolation methods, the cubic interpolation and the sink interpolation using the Kaiser window, and how we implemented this inside the framework structure. So uh, later, after we do this review about the implementation, I'm going to show you the experimental results of the execution of the full waveform inversion. It was three executions, one for each interpolator where we, could, we can uh, analyze and compare the results and then uh, we can take some conclusions about that and say the next steps we want to, to follow. So the V2 is a domain-specific language for implementing high-performance finite difference partial differential equation solvers. So actually what the V2 does is to offer to the user an environment where the user can define his finite difference equation as a symbolic equation. So he defines what equation he wants to solve in a symbolic way. He puts in a uh, derivative symbol, a Laplacian symbol, a gradient symbol. He don't need to implement this, uh, these functions. You only have to use the symbols and the V2, you treat the symbols and will generate the code that execute them. So the V2 works, the V2 take this symbolic equations and send this to the operator. This is a and the structure inside the Vito, and this operator will generate optimized C code that executes that symbolic equation that the user wants to solve. So if you take a look in the basic workflow of the Vito, we need to define a data that we want to manipulate to the first step. Then we need to define the symbolic equation, the equation that we want to solve. We can see here the, the, the uh, second derivative on time. Uh, we can see here the Laplacian of, of the function U, U, and these equations is sent to the operator, but the U here, operator EKN, and then the operator will generate the optimized C code. This optimized C code is going to be compiled and then execute, and the result will be returned to the user, and then the user had the solution for the equation that he wants to solve, right? We can see this uh, example in a code is, I, I believe is gonna be clear. Uh, then we create the first step, create the, the function, the, sorry, the data function, name f uh, is a data function that holds the data in the grid four by four, 16, point, 16 points of data. And then the equation that we want to solve is that the function f is gonna receive the value of the derivative of f. So we send this to the operator here, the operator is going to generate the equations, as we can see, equations is going to generate the C code, sorry, as we can see here. Here's the C code that is generated by the operator. So you take a simple equation, symbolic equation, and turn this into an optimized C code. This is how the V2 works, this is how the V2 helps the user to manipulate some differential, uh, partial differential equations, right? Uh, another different, another important thing to say about the V2 is the existence of a sparse function that can represent receivers. Receiver as, receivers are an object that wants to capture the value of the data in some specific coordinates of a specific, a specific some, sorry. A receiver is an object that wants to capture the value of the data in some specified coordinate in the grid. So you got the grid of the data, all these points are data points, so you want to, the point F, X, Y, is the coordinate of the receiver. No, what's the data data point, the data value, sorry, in this point? Well, this point no has represented, 
is not represented by any point of the grid. So in this context is where we need to use interpolation methods. You need to do interpolation, take the neighbor points to estimate the value of the point that you want to know, that's the point where the receiver are located. So this is how the interpolation methods works inside the VITO. The interpolation Interpolation, the standard interpolation method inside the VITO is the linear interpolator and in, in, is implemented inside a class named linear interpolator. Is inside the method, the function interpolate is generated all the symbolic equations that when it's passed through the operator will generate a C code that will execute the linear interpolation. So here you're gonna yeah, here you're gonna find all the process to generate the index, the symbolic equations, the access to the grid, multiplication by the the, the coefficient, linear coefficients, all the stuffs that will implement the linear interpolation. So we got this standard method of interpolation that is the linear one. We got two more that we're gonna talk in this presentation: the cubic convolution and the sync interpolation using the Kaiser window. This was the two interpolation methods that we implement inside the VT structure. Let's begin with the cubic convolution, cubic interpolation. So this interpolation consists of multiplying neighboring points by a cubic interpolation kernel. Simply you take the four neighbor points that you use considering a one-dimensional uh, interpolation and multiply each of them for his its respective kernel. So kernel is defined by this function here, depending on the distance of the point neighbor, the, the neighbor point to the interpolated point, you got a different equation that represents this kernel. Then multiplying this and sum all the results, you got the final result of the interpolation. It's a simple equation, it's a simple, uh, simple equation to implement uh, in, in, in a symbolic way. A, symbolic way because it's the way that the VITO works. You implement this in the symbolic equations and the operator will generate the C codes to execute them. So if you want to execute, to choose a two-dimensional grid and it's two-dimensional interpolation, we just adapt this equation to a two-dimensional equation here. If you want a three-dimensional, it's the same way. You just adapt one kernel for each dimension. You assess the grid using three indices so it's basically the same way, simple equation to implement. So if we can focus in the two-dimensional example in the way that we can represent in a graphical way. So we got this, all these neighbor points, 60 neighbor points, in the central points, the central points F, X, Y, is the point that we want to interpolate. So we want to develop these points, yes, we want to develop of this point, so we need to take this one, multiply by respective uh, kernel. Uh, 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 the kernel in x dimension and the kernel relative to the y dimension. So we hold this data, now we multiply, we multiply this value of the data for his respective kernels hold the data. Now you multiply this and it made this for all the points, you sum all the results, the portal results, and you got the result, the estimative of these points, consider the neighbor points in this grid, right? So the way they implement this was defining symbolic, symbolic equations that take the points, the neighbor points of this, the grid, of the function they will, the data function that we are manipulating and then multiply for his respective kernel that depends on the distance between the, the neighbor points and the interpolation points, right? This implementation are made inside a new class, a cubic interpolation class. Inside this method interpolation, we generate all the symbolic equations that, as I said, it's gonna be executed, it's gonna be uh, translated to C language and executed in in, in C, it returns to us the result of a cubic interpolation. Uh, the receiver is created with the linear interpolator as a, as a standard. So we define this flag cubic. So when the cubic, flag cubic is weak, equal to true, we define that the interpolator is now a cubic interpolator, no longer a linear interpolator. So now you only need to change the flag and you can use the interpolate method in the same way that was 
when you you had the linear interpolator you don't have the user don't have to worry about how, how it works inside the the v2 structure so the interpolate the sink kaiser interpolation methods is quite similar to the cubic one because it consists in multiplying the neighbor points to for a kernel of interpolation the two main difference is that the number of neighbor points while the cubic one uses four points here we use eight neighbor points four dimensions uh, for each dimension and the kernel is different it's no longer a kernel of cubic convolution it's a kernel contain the kaiser window and the fu the sync function so the same works in the same way if you want to work with the two dimensional grid we adapt this equation that is simple and easy to implement as the cubic one was and if you want a third dimensional uh, sync kaiser interpolation you got this equation so let, let's see uh, let's back to the two dimensional example and see the grid uh, you can see first of things that appear to us is that the difference between the number of points right uh, while cubic one uses 16 points to determine uh, to estimate the value we use 64 to the sync kaiser interpolation it's more expensive expensive but at the same time use more uh, has more influence of the neighborhood so the result tends to be more smooth in relation to the your neighborhood so um one important thing to say here is that we need to calculate the Kaiser function to any, any of this, uh, each of these points in x and, and y. As we can see, we need this in kernel x and cas in kernel y. It was kernel to z dimension. If you have a three-dimensional grid, so we can we define that we're going to store all these coefficients in a function. That function can that store uh, the data in the virtual. So for each value of x, we define the value of, of uh, the Kaiser window. So if, if we have 8 value of x in the neighborhood, we got x0, x1, x2, x3, we will get all these values inside this function, x0, x1, x2, x3. Each row, no, sorry, each column represents one neighbor points of the, the receiver. And each row represents one receiver. So if you've got another one, we can see here x8, x9 is a receiver in another position of the grid. We got another line that represents all the coefficients of the Kaiser functions for all these points. You can see this is the ax coefficient. If we, we, we want the, the y, we, we got another structure that represents the distance in x, uh, y0, y1, y2, y3, and we can go on with all these points. Uh, we implemented a Kaiser interpolator method uh, class when inside the interpolate method we implement all these this symbolic equations and define a flag where this flag is equal to true the interpolator will not be a linear interpolator but it will be a Kaiser interpolator working in a simple way so we made an experimental results performing a full waveform inversion FWI with using a model sorry using a model generated by the mod C script 25 iterations, 101 receivers. And each iteration generates objective functions that how less the, is this value, it's better the result. Better is the result. So the linear cubic uh, uh, has the same result and the Kaiser has similar results. Some, uh, some iterations like better, some iterations like worse. So the way that we can compare this in a better way, we made this error evaluation using the root mean square and we can see that linear and cubic interpolator inter interpolator got the same result because the iteration has the same value and the Kaiser after the 25th iterations has a result a little bit better a little slightly better but too close to each other so what, what we can see from this is that uh, we added to the, the victor two more methods that work as alternative to the standard interpolation method as we can see the results that we got from fw full waveform inversions are satisfactory because they represent they are current to the model that we expected to receive they are close to the linear one they are present uh, an, a smooth uh, a, a nice results can i say this way 
One problem is that the model that we use is too simple, so the results are too close, it's too, uh, it's too close to each other. The difference is not that big. So the next step is to execute this with more complex models, in the way that we can define the difference between the real difference between these methods. So this is our job, and thanks so much for your time.